Hello everyone, here's our third stop in the United Kingdom with uh, Sean, the 2023 NFC Young Birds winner. How are you doing today? Yes, very good, thank you. Uh, thanks for welcoming us here. Uh, it's a nice pleasure to, to see you after we, we talked. You, yeah. We didn't get a time to talk too much at Doncaster, was it? Yeah. And um, we would like to ask you to present yourself uh, for the whole people that are watching especially to ask you how did you start racing pigeons and uh, how many years ago was that? Um, I started racing about two and a half years ago. Um, obviously the build up to my racing about 20 years ago, um, my good friend Peter Gilbert, I was at one of his races. Um, it was a national race um, and he was second and I had the pleasure of seeing that second place pigeon come home and I just got the bus from there really. And you ended up uh, moving in here? Um, so yeah, so 20 years ago, it was always in my mind to get pigeons and we finally moved to this property um, where we knew we was gonna stay. And yeah, we had a, a summer house um, already down there when we moved here. So the first thing I thought of was get racing pigeons. <laughs> nice. <laughs> when already after uh, just a few year and a half of last year, you had an incredible year, I could say. Yeah. Uh, Tell us a bit about uh, how it went the whole year. How did you uh, race? And then, of course, about the racing. You won in the end. Um, wow, the young birds racing was absolutely wonderful. Um, obviously, I had old birds, and there was a few mistakes I made um, with the feeding wise. So it was just getting used to learning the ropes with the pigeons, um, trying to work out what they liked, what they didn't like, the amount. Um, with the young birds, um, with the old birds, I didn't have no discipline and with the young birds it was my objective to have that discipline because I think you needed that discipline. Um, so yeah, um, absolutely cracked it with the, with, the, with the young birds. I put the effort in, I was getting up at four o'clock in the morning, taking them training. Um, yeah, absolutely outstanding. And how was the day of uh, the arrival when you, when you won? Um, <laughs> It was it was magical. Um, I, I see the pigeon coming in, and I, I just knew the way it was dive bombing in, the way she was coming in. It it was my national pigeon. We had three races that day. I had the club, um, a breeder buyer, which was from Guernsey, and we had the national, and they was all due around about the same time. But seeing that pigeon, the way it was coming in, tucked its wings and literally dived through that trap. It was amazing. Um, and me just running to that clock just to make sure it clocked in was absolutely wonderful, yeah. <laughs> uh, you told us about discipline. Yeah. Um, we want to ask you to present a week prior to a race from the when they come home all the way up to the when you basket them. How um, is it looking, you know, motivation, training, supplementation, feed? So the, the, the um, discipline, Obviously, it's done mostly through the food and getting them to do what I wanted them to do. So it was always, I would cut back on that feed so I wouldn't give them that extra feed. Um, that's how I got them flying so well. Um, they weren't feeding too much, it was just right. So basically, um, on a weekend, I would work out what the wind's gonna be for that weekend of racing. Um, and I would try and go that way to think the way they're gonna come through through the racing. Um, sometimes I would see myself drive them 70 miles at four o'clock in the morning. Um, obviously to get there, let them go and then drive back and come uh, go to work. Um, so they would go training Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every single day, um, never in the same place and always that little bit further. So by Thursday we were usually at 60, 70 miles. Um, Friday morning um, they get um, your supplements um, the energy on their corn. Um, sometimes I put healthy oil on there um, just because it mixes up nicer. Nothing goes in their water, fresh water every single day. Anything that says goes on water, I put it on the corn. Um, I just like them to have fresh water. Um, return of, of racing, they would have healthy oil um, on their corn, very light mix. Um, they would have energy on that corn again. And the same on Sunday, they would have that energy on the corn. And then basically the week starts all over again. Yeah. And uh, now you're just finishing uh, breeding. Yeah. Races are uh, four weeks apart. 
approximately. Yeah. Uh, tell us about uh, the situation now. How do you keep the pigeons uh, in terms of feeding supplementation? And then when um, you, what do, will you do to prepare for, for what's coming? I've just, obviously, they, they've just, there's still a few of the um, races still on chick, so it was a bit later um, hatching. But they go out every day. Um, supplements, I've, I've been using all your supplements now, so the garlic oil, um, the organo, um, you'll see in, in the shed there's variety. I, I don't have set days of what and when I give it to them. It's, I try and swap things around so it's not plain and boring the same thing. So I kind of knock them, the synchronization is a bit not there. But it, um, I like to see them, I, I wouldn't like to eat the same food every single day, the same thing. So I always mix things around. Um, also based on, on uh, you know, seeing uh, <coughs> their shape and everything, yeah. Um, Observing what they need. Their feather wise is absolutely outstanding. The conditions, absolutely brilliant. Um, even with feeding youngsters, um, when I bred last year a few youngsters, um, I could, I'd say they looked a little bit rougher than what they do now, but by using them supplements, the chicks have been seen to be growing a lot quicker. Um, but the, the old birds are in absolutely fantastic condition. And I can't knock the feather quality at all. And what do you plan to do in the upcoming weeks to prepare them? Um, the training? So yeah, I've started training my hens. Um, we got the first national in May, so that's going to be my objective um, to pick the best I possibly can for the first race um, for the national. So basically, um, I'm, I'm just going to concentrate on the hens for the first first couple of races, and then once it starts a bit a little bit warmer, I'll start getting the cocks into action. Um, the motivation-wise for the cocks, I think it's going to take me a little bit longer because they're quite new to things. So the system that I'm going to try, I think it's going to take them a, that little bit longer to get used to. Um, but with the hens, they're in great condition, so I'll try and go all out with the hens for the first race. All right, we'll ask you now to show us around here yep. and uh, check all the lofts that you've got. Okay. Okay, so we are starting the tour of your uh, yep. loft. Here's the stock loft. Yeah, this is one of the stock lofts. You also got the First Nation on in here. Yep, definitely. So She's see. in here. So you immediately move this pigeon into the stock loft yep. after one. Yeah. Tell us a bit about uh, his origins, his parents. Um, and so the parents, they're uh, bulks. Um, they were stock pigeons um, that I had from a gentleman called Steve Perkins. Um, so yeah, that's where she's from, pure bulk. Um, How many races? Uh, so she's had, she had four races. Um, no, she didn't, she had three. Training, I lost her probably about a week she come back and she wasn't in great shape lost absolutely loads of loads of weight um, so I put her in a little box fed her up four days she started gaining weight so I put her back with the team a couple of days later back to training she went um, trained her for about two weeks um, and the first club race was Yalverton was coming up which was I think about 157 miles um, and she was my first pigeon home um, so from then, obviously, the distance she'd done and the time she'd done, I thought she's definitely one for the national. Um, so yeah, then following week she went to the national and then won that. Yeah. Huge congrats again. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us a bit about the ventilation system you upgraded here. <laughs> yeah, so the ventilation, I wasn't particularly happy of the way it was before, so I got vents down the bottom, so I put an extractor fan in. Um, so basically, that sucks all the air. Fresh air comes in, comes up, and then just goes straight out. Um, and the smell is just constantly smells of fresh air, which I think is really important for the stock pigeons and the youngsters in the nests. Okay, we got your second loft here. Yeah, this is um, these are stock again. These are mainly um, 23 pigeons, so there's a few chicks in there with a few older ones. These would be the main stock probably for next year, um, so just basically letting these youngsters mature a bit more. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, see what we can get, see if we can get any improvement on pigeons or not. Um, but they're looking pretty good in here. Yeah, I've asked you when we came first here, we can feel a mint kind of smell. Yeah. You told us so you do something pretty often with your pigeons. Um, every couple of months I put smoke bombs in the loft. Um, it's good for any bugs, it clears any airways, um, any snuffly coals, it just basically gets rid of it. I yeah. see. Tell us about uh, how do you go through the winter? Do you do any treatments or everything is lab tested? Um, do you do any tests on them? I treat. I always treat my birds. Um, whatever treatment I do, I, I do canker, coxidosis. Um, I, I, I send tests off, even if it comes back okay, I still like to just do them to be safe. Um, so I know the youngsters are going to be safe. Um, but yeah, we always do separate and probably if I, this year I paired in December, so it was literally October I started with the treatments. Um, most of them said seven days, I've done them for five, because there's nothing wrong with them, but, and we lowered the dosage that little bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. What do we have here? These are the young birds um, that I've just weaned off. I think there's probably about 20 in here. Um, so these are gonna be the young birds race team. And our final stop is, of course, the racing loft. Yep. The pigeons are now flying yep. right in the back. Uh, let's take a look inside then. Okay. So these are my hens. All right. These are the cocks. There's still a few more chicks, obviously, in here. These were a bit later than all the others have been taken away, but they're in there. Yeah. You said the cocks are now training outside for about an hour? About an hour, yeah. I'd like to have a good hour. Um, just started putting the nest box fronts on now, um, ready for the racing. Um, yeah, you know. Nice. We saw your uh, loft out. We saw your breeding loft, racing loft. I want to ask you all because I didn't ask you while we were in the breeding loft. What are the main pigeons that you have in your loft? Term? In terms of origins? Um, the main, we got Leo Hermans and Bulks are my main, um, and a couple of sapping pigeons. I see. And how often do you, do you bring no, uh, new pigeons into your loft? And um, what are you looking for? I'm, I'm still quite new to it. Um, I, tr I, like, I brought quite a few new pairs in um, last year, not for this year breeding, but for the following year. Um, We've got a few different pairs that we are going to try out this year um, and just see how it goes. If we need to bring some more in for that bit of extra speed, then that's what we'll do. Yeah, you're just, uh, as you said, a bit new, so everything yeah. will just be in progress. So creating a line of pigeons of your own will take a bit of time. Yeah, definitely. So, Sean, thank you for showing us around. It was a nice uh, visit. Visiting you for yeah. the first time. We wish you good luck in the upcoming season. Uh, hope we can get here again during this year and we are sending our greetings to everyone that's watching. We wish you a nice day. Thank you very much. <laughs>